So scrolling through the Fusion 360 Facebook group, I came across this one post where one of the members was asking for guidance with this one particular design. Um, I read it and at first I thought, oh, let me just do a quick little video showing the steps and how I would tackle this. But then I thought this was an interesting enough challenge that I should make a video for my YouTube community because I think uh, many of you would find it very useful. Um, there's quite a few gems in this tutorial that I think a lot of you guys are going to appreciate. Okay, here's the problem. So what we're trying to do is create sort of a racetrack here where it starts off flat, you have the straightaway, and then the as it curves, because this is going to be an oval racetrack, as it curves it's going to bank and this part of the curve gets raised and it starts to bank to one side and then gradually comes back to being flat again. So you've seen these in different racetracks, so kind of like this image here, where you, you're straight but where you're turning it's going to be curved and banks up and then you uh, get straight again. So, I mean it sounds pretty straightforward, but before many of you just start shouting like, you know, chamfer, loft, you know, <laughs> you know, all the just just throwing terms out there that, you know, you think in your mind might work or you might have an idea in your mind that you think, oh, that's easy. You can just do this. What I would recommend is really just kind of pausing the video and trying it out and see if you can get it to work with the solution you're thinking. Um, so pause the video, give it a shot and then come back and I'll show you my solution and we can compare results. We'll begin as usual by creating a sketch. So we'll go to create and down to create sketch. We're going to select the XY plane as our sketching plane and we're going to begin with the slot tool. Now the slot tool is also found under the create menu. So we'll go to create down to slot and you'll see that there's different ways here that you can define a slot. And if you just hover over each of these, the little description uh, explains on how they're defined. I'm going to go with the center to center slot. And the way this one is defined is you basically left click to select your uh, center arc and then you're going to move out. I'm going to make sure to stay horizontal here so I get that horizontal constraint. And I can either left click again to set that distance between the two arcs or I can type a dimension. I'm going to go ahead and type 100 millimeters here. I am working in millimeters. Um, so this is going to be a pretty tiny racetrack, but we'll type 100 and I'll hit enter and now I can drag my mouse down to set the width. So the first thing we did was set our distances between the two arc centers and now we're going to set the width or that uh, arc diameter and I'm going to make that 50 millimeters and hit enter. And that goes ahead and creates my slot. Now what I want to do is center this slot so that the midpoint of this line here is at the center of this origin. And a great way to do that is with the midpoint constraint. So first before I select the midpoint constraint right here I'm going to hit escape to make sure I have nothing else selected. And I'm going to click on that little triangle. I'm going to click on this line on my slot and then click on the origin and that's going to bring my slot right there. Placing your designs right on the origin or centering them on the origin really helps out later if you want to take advantage of the existing sketch planes and use some symmetry tools. Next you want to make sure to hit escape. Notice that little triangle following my pointer. That's showing me that the midpoint constraint is still selected so I'm gonna hit escape because if I select something else while that's still selected it'll apply that constraint to whatever I select and this can get all sorts of errors happening. So always just make sure to hit escape when you want to get out of a constraint. Okay, so now you can clearly see the slot is basically the shape of the racetrack. But the approach I'm going to use later when I use the loft tool is only going to work if I get rid of some of these lines. And I don't really have to get rid of them completely, but I do have to turn some of them into construction lines. So basically the only thing I really need here is this arc, but not the whole arc, just uh, half of it. So if I select it right now, I can see that I can't select just half. It selects the whole thing. So if I hit delete, that whole thing deletes. Or if I hit X to make it a construction line, the whole arc turns into a construction line. So the next tool I'm going to show you really comes in handy when you want to only affect a certain part of a line or an arc or any sketch entity really. And that's the break tool and that's found under the modify menu. So modify break. But before I use the break tool, I actually have to 
have a point where two lines come together to create an intersection. So to do that, I'm going to hit L on my keyboard. That's going to give me my line tool and I'm going to grab a line that goes straight up this way. Hit that check mark. You can see it came as a construction line. That's because if you look here, I can toggle this little uh, construction um, button here on or off by clicking X. So usually I just keep it untoggled. And then I'm going to create one more line over here. And then I'm going to actually select that line and click X to make it a construction line. All right. So now if I go to modify and down to break and I hover over this arc, you can see it gives me that little red X that's showing me where that break point is going to be. It'll be right where that intersection is. Now click on it and now I'll hit escape. And if I select this arc, you can see that it doesn't go all the way through. Now it only gives me that selection that I wanted. Great feature there. If you're not familiar with the break tool, it can really come in handy. So now what I can do is select everything else and turn it into a construction line. I'll select each one of these and just hit X. And that leaves me with just this arc. Okay, that's all I need to do here. So I'm going to click on finish sketch. And now I'm going to create another sketch and this sketch will be on the Z Y plane here. So it's, you can see that plane cuts my drawing right in half, which is the whole reason for placing it in that uh, origin there. So I'm, I'm going to select it and I'm going to hit P on my keyboard for project. And I'm going to project this line here, that construction line. And the important thing, it gives me that little red dot that shows me where that line intersects that plane. And that's what I need. I'll click OK. And I'm going to grab a two point rectangle and I'm going to start that rectangle by referencing that little dot. And I'm going to come out and make this five by ten and hit enter. OK, so now I'm going to create another sketch here. And this other sketch is going to be on a plane perpendicular to this uh, plane I'm currently in. So first I'll hit finish sketch and then I'm going to go to create sketch again. And this time I'm going to go with the ZX plane and I'm going to sketch that or create my uh, other uh, drawing right over here. But I need to reference this arc here again. I'm going to project it in. So P for project. I'm going to just click on it and then click OK. And you see it gives me this little dot here where this arc intersects where I want to draw. So uh, this time I'm just going to grab my line tool. Let's go to a front view. And I'm just going to sort of just freehand draw a basic shape that I'm looking for, which is just this. And D for dimension, I'm going to come in and dimension these parts. So this bottom part, I'm going to make it the same as that rectangle, which was 5 by 10. So now I have to dimension this height over here. I think I'm going to go with 12 with that. And that gives me the sort of uh, slope over here. And that's everything I need. So I'll click on finish sketch and let me zoom out a bit and you can see what's going on here. Uh, basically what I want to do is have this rectangle here extrude and then transition into this profile here. Um, but if I do a loft right now from here to here, um, what's going to happen is it's going to start making that transition right away. But what I wanted to have is that straight away first. So I'm going to go to create extrude and just select that profile and have it extrude straight out first. That way I want it to go straight for a while and then start that curve. With the extrude feature here, I'm going to change my extents. Instead of distance, I'm going to say to object and I'm going to click on this point right here and it'll extrude it right to that point showing me that that's 50 millimeters and I'll click OK. All right, now I'm ready to grab my loft tool. So I'll go to create and down to loft. I'll select it and I get my dialog box here. I'm just going to select my two profiles. The first one's going to be the surface here of the end of that extruded rectangle. And my second surface is going to be this uh, little slope profile that I made. And I get a nice loft uh, between the two. But it's not really what I'm looking for. And so what I'm going to do is um, expand sketches here. And let me bring my first sketch into view. And that gives me this arc here. I want that loft to follow this arc. So I'm going to click here where it says rails. And I click on that little pointer there. And now I'm going to select that arc. And there we go follows that arc. So now I have that loft there um, going, uh, giving me that nice transition into this sloped profile, but it's going to follow that arc. And this is the whole reason why I only wanted that 
arc why I made the rest of these lines a trim line or a, sorry a construction line was because had I not it would have wanted to follow the entire line and I didn't want that I just wanted it to follow this little arc I'm gonna show you one other really neat tip here if I zoom in you can see that that transition begins right at that edge right it's it's sort of abrupt it just automatically starts sloping up I'm gonna change this from connected to uh, tangent and notice what happens um, so I have two options tangent and curvature um, if you keep your eye over here I'm gonna select tangent and I want you to see what happens to that curve notice that it's now much more of a gradual curve uh, it's it's not so abrupt so let me change that back one more time to connect it so you see the difference that's connected and I'm gonna go to tangent and we get a nicer gradual curve so I like the look of that a lot better um, that smoother transition so I'm gonna click OK all right and let's go ahead now we don't need to see these sketches so I'm gonna untoggle that and that's basically the main part of this design is getting this section here uh, because the rest of it is all symmetrical I could just now use my mirror tool to make the rest of the design and I can see here that if I expand bodies I should only have one body which I do and that's because if I go back to that loft command here in my toolbar uh, when it made that loft it made a it was defaulted to a join operation uh, instead of a new body or a cut so that being joined it combined these two into one body so now all I have to do is go to create down to mirror and I'm gonna mirror this section here um, to this side on the bottom so my pattern type I'm gonna make sure that's set to bodies object I'll select my object and my mirror plane is going to be this uh, section right here or this surface and you can see it creates a mirror of that body and I'm gonna right click and go up which will just be my last function I uh, did which is my mirror so it'll say repeat mirror and I'm gonna do the same thing again bodies I'm gonna select this plus this so I'll select both of them it'll say two objects selected my mirror plane could either be actually could it be any one of these this surface this plane or this surface I'll just collect this surface because they're all on the same plane and that'll give me a mirror from that side to this side and now I have my track but I have four separate bodies here and I only want one body so right now we'll do a boolean operation and combine everything so we'll go to modify down to combine and we're gonna set our target body as really it could be any one of these bodies um, so we'll select one of them our tool bodies we'll just select the rest and as long as they're all touching they will all join I don't need to select any uh, of these um, options over here so I'll click OK and we see that those four bodies now collapsed into one so here is our racetrack and it's exactly what we wanted so we're, we have a straightaway here and right when it hits this point we go with that gradual uh, ascension here to hit this bank over here where it starts to curve and then we go back down into our straightaway and again so exactly what we're looking for now the great thing with fusion 360 is that you can make edits right so we're going to go back to our first sketch here on our timeline and let's just test some edits i'm going to right click here on that first uh, item on the timeline go to edit sketch now I can see that this is blue so it's not fully constrained and that can be a problem sometimes when you go back to make edits and if your sketch is not fully constrained then you it'll give you issues where things tend to break so before we um, do any changes let's constrain everything and make sure our sketch is all uh, everything is black meaning uh, it's all fully constrained right now uh, a way to tell is you can start see if I grab this with my um, if I left click on the mouse and move this I can see that it starts to move um, so that's where it's lacking um, uh, being constrained so I'm gonna hit command Z to undo and I'm gonna constrain it by hitting D on my keyboard selecting this line here and clicking to set that dimension which is 100 millimeters and automatically you see that this turned from blue to black and now I can't move it so it's fully constrained and now we can uh, go in and double click on this let's make that 200 and see how that affected our design and you can see that our track uh, is now uh, 200 millimeters wide here and everything was able to um, hold up it's great so uh, it didn't break which is a good sign let's go and make that like 80 
and let's see if we make it smaller than its original intent what happens it still works uh, another great thing we could do is edit edit this slope over here so if i go to um, and this that's the third sketch i made i'll click there and go to edit sketch and here's something we can do so i can say uh, i'm going to select this line here and hit t for trim and let's change it to an arc so we'll go with our three point arc click here and up here and we'll give it a nice little arc there finish sketch and you can see that that transition is now an arc and it'll happen to both sides and you don't even um you're not limited to just arcs for example we can come in and put a spline in there so i'll select it and t for trim i'm going to trim that line and we're going to go with a spline tool this time so fit spline point we're gonna do we'll do something wacky like this just to kind of show my point um finish sketch and look at that we have a nice little spline curve that it follows so okay and normally i probably wouldn't do something like that i would let me see get rid of like these two spline points over here and then you can just click on the edges and you know maybe do something like this let me zoom in a bit more and have a more of a gradual spline you know um finish sketch and you've got something like that um all right i'm gonna i think i like the arc the best so let's i'm just gonna change that one last time oops wrong sketch i want to change this one so let's let me flip this and we're gonna change this back to an arc three-point arc and I'm gonna do not such a deep arc, maybe just like a little gradual arc here. We also have the option to just enter a, a, a radius, I mean, for that arc. So you can maybe say you want that to be 20 um, a millimeter radius. You could set that, finish sketch, and there's our arc. All right, let's untoggle sketches here. So there's our racetrack there. Let's look at it from a top view. We can see it's got a really good transition in making those curves. Um, so and it does exactly what we wanted to do going straight into a uh, uh, curve going up and then going back down to going uh, straight again so all right so how did you do was it as straightforward as you thought like did you have a solution in mind and then you went to go try it and it worked exactly as you had planned or did you go try your solution and then realize oh it's it's not quite as simple as i thought it was going to be or you know this approach actually is not going to work i'm gonna have to tweak it um that's usually sometimes how it goes with me you know i i think i have a solution right in my mind and i go tackle it and i realize oh not you know not quite <laughs> so let me know i'm curious to hear what your experience was uh let me know if you learned anything in this tutorial or if you have any questions uh leave it in the comments below and i will be going back to check them and we'll answer them i hope you guys enjoyed this this was sort of just one of those quick ones i was in the middle of a project actually in the middle of uh, recording another video and i saw the question and i thought all right, let's put that on pause and let me just uh, make a video on this. So uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty of those. And sometimes they come from questions you guys have for me as well. All right, guys, leave any questions below. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more videos. I will be back soon with another project. I'll see you next time.